Sonography of Calculi and Calcifications of the Urinary Tract Part 2 Ureter and Urinary Bladder So whenever there is a dilated collecting system or hydronephrosis then you can trace the pelvis and the ureter and uh, see the level and uh, when it is a calculus is a cause of obstruction it may be seen as an echogenic lesion in the line of dilated ureter with acoustic shadow that is typical of a ureteric calculus now here it is in the upper ureter with dilated ureter above and the dilated pelvic allicyl system so here uh, tracing the dilated ureter we can find out the ureteric calculus so here there is dilated uh, pelvic allicyl system upper ureter and mid ureter so you go down and you see a calculus at the ureterovesicle junction so when there is dilated ureter it can be traced and the cause of obstruction can be found out and if it is a calculus it is seen as an echogenic lesion in the ureter line of the ureter with shadowing so that is there is no difficulty now this is a case where uh, you trace the ureter that is the upper ureter mid ureter it is being traced you see the mid ureter dilated and the lower ureter and you see a calculus at the lower ureter distal most ureter so this is how a ureteric calculus is diagnosed when there is a, that is the calculus so when there is dilated um, ureter there is no difficulty and here another example dilated calisis uh, pelvis and 80% uh, of ureteric calculi are at the ureterovesicle junction so you uh, once you see hydronephrosis with a patient a patient with a colic you go to the uh, immediately to the ureterovesicle junction and the lower ureter here it is not dilated then you come back and trace the ureter and you see the calculus in the upper ureter by tracing the upper ureter you find out a calculus in the uh, actually in the junction of the upper and mid ureter that is the uh, protocol so you go to the uh, you see dilatation of the pellicle system go to the lower ureter with no calculus so you trace the ureter and you find the calculus in the mid ureter it is generally told that HRCT is the best um, investigation for ureteric calculi because of some myths about sonography. Ultrasound is blind for dilated mid ureter and uh, because of bowel gas, because of the deep retroperitoneal location of the ureter. But uh, we know that it is at the same level as appendix. So if appendix can be seen, ureter can be seen. And um, we need a full bladder for distal ureter non dilated ureter is not seen and calculi at multiple levels will be missed by ultrasound and when there is non obstructive dilatation it may be misleading that it is due to calculus and ureter may be dilated below the calculus also because of uh, the common cause of over distended bladder so these are the some more myths of about sonography in acute obstruction ureter need not be dilated Acute obstruction bladder will not be full and uh, anuria when there is anuria due to bilateral calculus collecting system may not be dilated and uh, in the follow up of a calculus ureter may not be dilated so your calculus may not be seen there may be a calculus along with the stent and there may be a recently passed out calculus with a dilated uh, collecting system which may be misleading and in pregnancy there is a dilatation of collecting system due to gravid uterus which has to be differentiated for from calculus when the patient presents with pain so these are the myths we will see whether it is true or not now patient in acute pain and uh, bladder is not full so you cannot wait for full bladder to diagnose but here you see the bladder is empty but still you are able to see the ureter and uh, there is a calculus at the ureterovesicle junction this is on right side and another uh, similar case you see the bladder is almost empty but still you see a calculus in the UVJ with the ureter seen proximally. So if it is bilateral then ureteric calculi patient uh, may be in anuria or oliguria. So now we know that uh, even with uh, acute colic when the bladder is empty calculus may be seen. Now so in that case uh, if suppose you it's not seen by abdominal scan you can try endovaginal scan you will see the distal ureter and the calculus in the distal ureter and in men we can try a transrectal ultrasound you see the bladder 
the distal ureter and the calculus of the distal ureter and non dilated ureter with calculus how to pick it up so patient presents with history of ureteric colic or hematuria and x ray shows a calculus and uh, because of acute obstruction the ureter is not dilated but still you see the kidney and you see the ureter and there is a calculus so that is the ureter but even if this ureter is not made out you can wait for some time there will be ureteric peristalsis so the ureter will distend and you will confirm that there is a calculus in the upper ureter okay so that is shown in the video you see the calculus you see uh, the ureter and you see how the typical movement of the calculus with the peristalsis of the ureter so that again confirms that it is in the ureter this is the high frequency scan you see the ureter and you see the calculus here and you see the calculus moves with ureteric peristalsis this is a very important clue in the diagnosis of calculus in a non dilated ureter so here you see patient with colic kidney normal and there is no hydronephrosis and when you see uh, the lower ureter there is no calculus at the ureterovesical junction or the lower ureter so you try to trace a non dilated ureter so when you try to trace you see uh, wait for some time you see the ureteric peristalsis with that you see the calculus in the upper ureter with shadow so that ureteric peristalsis is useful now here you see again normal kidney no hydronephrosis no calculus at the uvj but um, there is a calculus in the uh, mid ureter with uh, distension of the ureter above due to peristalsis and this can be further seen with high frequency you see the dilated or uh, distended ureter above with the calculus within the ureter now here you see uh, a calculus in the region of the ureter but you are not able to confirm that it is in the ureter so if you wait for some time you will see the ureter peristalsis with the peristalsis you nicely see that the calculus is within the ureter so wait for the ureteric peristalsis which is shown on real time you see the calculus you confirm with the ureteric peristalsis that it is within the ureter again with high frequency you see the calculus here with the uh, ureteric peristalsis ureter distance above around the calculus and also the calculus also moves so that it confirms that it is ureteric calculus coming to the lower ureter again there is no hydronephrosis no calculus at the uvj but there is a suspicious calculus in the distal ureter lower ureter and uh, you wait for some time you see the ureteric uh, distension and then you see the calculus in the uh, distended ureter confirming that it is ureteric calculus distal most ureter again here no hydronephrosis no calculus at the uvj and uh, you wait for some time you see the distension of the distal ureter and you see the calculus within the distal most ureter because of ureteric peristalsis so you can see the uh, real time you see the ureter distance and you see the calculus and uh, here again you see the calculus and if you see wait for some time you see the calculus moves with ureteric peristalsis so here the ureter distance and you see the calculus in the line of the ureter and here the calculus moves with ureteric peristalsis so both signs confirm ureteric calculus and helps us to pick up calculi in non dilated ureters i hope you all will be convinced that we can see non dilated um, ureters in the non dilated ureter now here you see ureteric calculus on the x ray you see the calculus in the line of the upper ureter and uh, when you do ultrasound there is no hydronephrosis but um, when you see a trace the ureter you you see the peristalsis the ureter is seen and you see the calculus in the upper ureter confirming that it is calculus in the upper ureter you see the real time you see the no hydronephrosis you try to trace the ureter so now you see the upper ureter and as you trace it you see the calculus within the upper ureter and you see that movement also so that confirms that um, it's calculus in the non dilated upper ureter now here there is left ureteric uh, calculus on the x ray and uh, there is mild hydronephrosis when you trace the ureter as actually the calculus is in the upper ureter not in the lower ureter. so that is a flebolith so ultrasound confirms actually the upper ureteric calculus now here you see the real time 
you see the uh, mild hydronephrosis and you see the calculus here and the mid ureter is not dilated and uh, you go to the uh, lower ureter where you suspect calculus by the x-ray it is normal and so you go back and uh, see that it is actually in the upper ureter you see the ureter here and uh, in the you see the calculus here in the upper ureter it is not in the lower ureter so ultrasound can look for calculi in the non dilated ureter the patient presenting with acute colic and uh, there is no hydronephrosis and uh, you see the ureter is not dilated and the bladder is empty you can trace the uh, non dilated uh, ureter because of ureteric peristalsis and you see the calculus at the ureterovesical junction so you can pick up uh, even with empty bladder a patient presenting with uh, pain abdomen and anuria and uh, both the kidneys so uh, normal and uh, the ureter mid ureters are not dilated but uh, we are able to see by the peristalsis and when you come down you see the bladder is empty and you see calculus by tracing the non dilated ureter there are calculi at the ureterovesical junction on both sides that has resulted in anuria right side and left side so in a transverse scan you see the empty bladder and both the calculi at the ureterovesical junction so here ultrasound can pick up calculi in spite of anuria in spite of empty bladder and uh, spite of non dilated ureter in this in this cases uh, we can also use endovaginal scan or press to our advantage to uh, look for calculi in the distal ureter with an empty bladder so calculus with the stent so here the, there is stent and uh, in the renal pelvis and in the ureter and you see calculi by the side of the stent this particular issue comes up when patient presents with acute pain and um, or with or without anuria and they put a stent temporarily and uh, later on a patient is asymptomatic so before going for ureteroscope they would like to have whether the calculus still remains there so their ultrasound is really helpful you can trace the stent and look for calculi by the side of the stent which are easily seen by the side of the stent another example patient had colic scan revealed ureteric calculus comes after a few days no pain now so sent for check scan to go for ureteroscope to confirm that this calculus still remains now what are the possibilities in this clinical scenario so you may see a dilated ureter with uh, calculus or no calculus in the follow up scan or you may see non dilated ureter still you may trace and you may find a calculus or no calculus or you may see a small calculus in the urinary bladder now you see uh, in a such a scenario you no hydronephrosis you trace the ureter there is no calculus you trace the ureter mid ureter there is no calculus and go to the through the urinary bladder to the lower ureter and uh, still there is no you can see the peristalsis of the ureter and here you see the lower ureter again you see the peristalsis it confirms that it is ureter so you don't see a calculus so the calculus has been passed out that is uh, normal now here uh, you see uh, the same clinical scenario you see non dilated ureter and no calculus but you see edema of the ureterovesical junction confirming that it is a passed out calculus now here you see uh, the same scenario non dilated ureter no calculus in the ureter but you see a small calculus in the urinary bladder that is the calculus has escaped from the ureter into the urinary bladder confirming that it has passed out into the urinary bladder and the patient will pass out this calculus during next micturition now here you see in the same clinical scenario dilated collecting system you trace it you see the dilated upper ureter and then you come to the mid ureter which is also dilated and you come to the lower ureter it is also dilated but you don't find any calculus so again here the calculus is recently passed out and uh, the dilatation has not collapsed so it is still remaining vestibular dilatation that is also possible another myth is calculus at two sides may not be picked up on ultrasound now here you see uh, mild uh, hydroureteronephrosis in you see a calculus in the mid ureter not much dilatation 
and there is also calculus in the lower ureter. So, sites uh, calculi can be easily diagnosed on ultrasound. Now, here you see the dilated ureter below the calculus. So, that is the calculus, the line of ureter, that is dilated ureter below the calculus, there is no calculus down. So, this is possible because of the over distended urinary bladder. Now, in the ureteric calculi also, you can use uh, the tinkle artifact to confirm that it is calculus. Many, many times it may not be necessary. Now, here you see mild hydronephrosis and you see the upper ureteric calculus with shadow. But uh, the history is poorly controlled diabetes mellitus. So, it may be something else we will see. Now, here if you see carefully the images of this kidney, there is a dilated calysis, but there is parenchymal cavity. You see the communication of the cavity with the calyx and uh, so they are papillary necrotic cavities, multiple papillary necrotic cavities. So, with this picture, the calculus seen in the, uh, that is the real time, you see the collecting system and you see the parenchymal cavities. So, the parenchymal cavities are uh, in the parenchyma, uh, not away from the central echogenic area as explained in the papillary necrosis of brain infection. So, papillary necrotic cavities may be containing sloughed papilla like that, they are called the ring sign and when they pass out, you see the papillary necrotic cavities are empty, communicating with the renal pelvis. This is what we saw in this case. So, you see multiple parenchymal papillary necrotic cavities. So, with this, this may be a calcified sloughed papilla in the ureter which is causing obstruction. It may not be a calculus. How to differentiate papillary necrotic cavity versus hydronephrosis? The hydronephrosis, the calyces are dilated calyces are symmetric and they are contained within the central echogenic area and you see the parenchyma outside. Whereas in uh, papillary necrotic cavities, the cavities are outside the central echogenic area in the parenchyma with asymmetric dilatation as opposed to symmetric dilatation of hydronephrosis. You can see the schematic and hydronephrosis with how much progression, the dilatation uh, mild, moderate, severe, gross, the dilatation of the calyces is symmetric, contained within the central echogenic area and you see the parenchyma thinned, even though thinned out, you see the parenchyma and uh, very severe, you may not see parenchyma, you see a bag of fluid. So, however much the progression, the hydronephrosis, you do not see the cavities in the parenchyma as opposed to papillary necrotic cavities. Sometimes you may have to trace the ureter uh, from below, retrograde fashion. This is an example, you see IVP, the uh, left kidney is, uh, is a 6 year old girl presenting with dribbling of urine, IVU non-visualized uh, left kidney and isotopes can also non-visualized left kidney. Sent for ultrasound, you see the right kidney normal, the spleen and the left renal area is empty and uh, there is no suggestion of ectopic uh, kidney, left kidney. And uh, I as uh, described uh, earlier, the whenever uh, there is uh, empty renal fossa, I use uh, ureteric jet to say before that the kidney is absent. Because ectopic kidney, there may be ureteric jet and you can look carefully for the ectopic kidney. But here you see the jet on the right side. You don't see a jet on the left side, confirming that the left kidney is absent. But when because of dribbling of urine, a perineal scan shows fluid in the vagina. So, fluid in the vagina with the dribbling, then the suspicion is ectopic ureteric opening. So, going back to the jet uh, uh, image, you see the ureteric jet on the right side, but you see a small round uh, cystic structure there, whether it is a ureter. So, how to confirm? You turn the transducer longitudinally, you see that it is tubular structure, so it may be ureter. Then you trace from this proximally to look for a kidney, ectopic kidney and you see a small atrophic um, uh, left kidney in the lumbar region confirming that it is an ectopic uh, atrophic kidney with the ectopic ureteric opening into the vagina and uh, which is resulted in dribbling. So, this is how tracing the ureter sometimes retrograde fashion gives a better diagnosis and that was the removed atrophic kidney. Another example of tracing the ureter from below, uh, this is a 37 year old woman 
representing as abdominal pain non specific the left renal fossa was empty so jet was looked for and uh, there is uh, ureteric jet on left side there is normal kidney on the right side absent kidney on left side but the jet is seen on the left side so uh, there was no jet on the right side so what is happening so they search for ectopic left kidney it was not found so what has happened then you do a transverse scan of the pelvis you see the uterus ovary and you see a small uh, cystic structure medial to the left ovary whether it is left ureter then a little above uh, you see that uh, continuation of the cystic structure and uh, you see between there are two ibcs and the iota between the iota and left ibc you see that uh, uh, cystic structure which is continuous with it when we make a sweep and that in a little upper section you see that it is crossing to the right side in front of the iota so this is actually the ureter so what is actual picture is when you see the ivp you see a normal right kidney and the absent left kidney but you see the ureter the right ureter is crossing to the left and then opening on the left side of the bladder so this is a condition called solitary crossed renal ectopia so what has happened this is the schematic right kidney normal the ureter crosses to the left side so when you take a section here you see the ureter medial to the left ovary little above you see the ureter between iota and left is ivc and little above you see the left ureter crossing to the right and joining the right kidney so this is solitary cross renal ectopia and uh, this is an example where the ureter is traced from below to arrive at a, a better diagnosis tumor versus calculus in the ureter now here this is a plain x ray ivp in a patient with hematuria the ivp is normal 50 year one year old man hematuria iv is normal and ultrasound shows the right kidney mild distension of pelvic vessel system and in the line of ureter you see an echogenic uh, lesion and uh, the shadow is not very uh, good so whether it is calculus or tumor you would have a doubt and you look for the shadow so acoustic shadow is present you can see the acoustic shadow corresponding to the echogenic lesion so that confirms that it is a calculus and not a tumor whereas in tumor you see here that the ureter and you see a soft tissue mass distending the ureter and there is no shadowing actually there is enhancement so that is a mass so that is a tumor so the shadow helps us to say whether it is tumor or calculus now ureter calculus may be asymptomatic uh, to a degree that uh, there may be complete loss of function but still patient may be asymptomatic now here a patient uh, coming for something else you see gross hydronephros of the right kidney right ureter dilated up to uvj where there is a calculus with shadowing so calculus at the uvj has resulted in gross hydronephrosis and uh, atrophy of the parenchyma and loss of function of the kidney but the patient was all along uh, asymptomatic a calculi uh, due to stasis um, can happen there is an example of a urethrocele with stasis of urine with calculi in the urethrocele due to stasis so what is the solution to pick up ureteric calculi trace the entire length of the ureter whether it is dilated or not dilated so trace the entire length of the ureter dilated or not dilated ureter can be traced by ultrasound and the protocol is to first see the upper ureter lower ureter because most of the calculi are at the lower ureter and then again go back to the upper mid uh, ureter and um, pelvic brim and uh, look for peristalsis so if you, if you are not able to identify the ureter anywhere you can identify easily at the level of pelvic brim sometimes with high frequency scan and uh, the clue is peristalsis you wait for the ureteric peristalsis either you will see the calculus within the distended fluid distended ureter or the calculus will move with the ureteric peristalsis confirming that it is ureteric calculus and you can use a endovaginal scan or truss to your advantage then we come to vesical calculus vesical calculus can be asymptomatic or it may present with suprapubic pain hematuria or foul smelling urine due to infection with dysuria or it can cause obstruction with acute retention
So in the sickle calculi, you see the urinary bladder fluid will with an echogenic lesion in the lumen of the urinary bladder. Here it is a smooth echogenic lesion. It is spicule with the classical acoustic shadow confirming that it is vesicle calculus. And um, another feature of confirmation is the mobility of the calculus. So you can see uh, the supine, the calculus lying near the base of the bladder and uh, put the patient in left lateral decubitus, the calculus shift to the left lateral wall, confirming that it is a mobile vesicle calculus, which is shown on the real time. You can see from the left lateral, it with patient moving to supine, it falls back into the uh, base of the bladder. So mobility is confirms that it is a vesicle calculus. Now vesicle calculus may be due to migration of a ureteric calculus into the bladder or due to urinary stasis ur urinary bladder due to urinary bladder outflow obstruction, neurogenic bladder or sister seal or a foreign body. Now the wall of the urinary bladder may be normal or it may be thickened in a case of calculus. It may be diffuse um, thickening that is global thickening of the urinary bladder. It is due to uh, obstruction by the calculus or it may be focal thickening due to non-specific thickening or it may be due to ascomer cell carcinoma due to constant irritation by calculus or you may see a polypoid mass in the bladder associated with calculus. If it is polypoid then it, it may be an associated uh, transitional cell carcinoma with calculus. Now, vesicle calculus due to stasis may be due to benign hypertrophy of prostate as seen here. You see the enlarged prostate with uh, a calculus proximal in the urinary bladder or it may be due to neurogenic bladder. The features of neurogenic bladder are the, the thick walled trabeculated bladder and you see the calculus in the bladder due to neurogenic bladder and stasis. Now, vesicle calculus, the characteristic finding I told you is mobile mobility. Now here you see a calculus, the echogenic lesion with shadow in supine and left lateral decubitus, it doesn't fall. So it is immobile. So when it is immobile, that means it is either struck uh, on the vesicle wall, which is very, very unusual, or it may be a concretion on a tumor. You see the kidney with a calculus and uh, in the bladder immobile. But the patient gives history of surgery for a stone five years ago and um, the, you see a stent in the ureter. When you look for the ureter, you see a stent in the ureter. So it is a forgotten stent with um, calculus formation on the ends of the stent in the kidney as well as in the urinary bladder. How to make out? You make a sweep of the probe. You see some part of the stent and some part of the calculus in section, confirming that it is a calculus formation on the ends of the stent. Again, a didn't calculus or calcified tumor. You see the calculus in the bladder and it does not uh, shift with position. You do because it's a male patient, press helps to use the propagation of ultrasound to your advantage. Now here this is the calculus because of shadow, you are not able to see this area. So what you uh, aim of the truss is to see the mass from the opposite side. So from the rectum, you see the mass. So you see that uh, there is the prostate and transrectal ultrasound, that is the bladder and you see a polypoid mass in the bladder with uh, concretions on the surface which is seen here as a calculus fixed. And color doppler you see flow in the mass confirming that it is actually a transitional cell carcinoma with concretions on the surface and not a calculus. There may be calculus in the diverticulum, a cycle diverticulum as seen here that is the bladder and that is the diverticulum with the communication with the bladder and there is a calculus within the diverticulum. Another example of uh, a periuretric diverticulum with calculus in it. Ureka vesicle calculus, another uh, cause of uh, calcification in the bladder. You see the bladder, you see a calcification with shadow in the anterior wall, fixed to the anterior wall of the bladder. It doesn't shift with shifting the patient. And uh, when you use high frequency, you see a dumbbell type of calculus, one part of the calculus in the lumen and part of it in the wall of the urinary bladder. This is near the dome of the bladder. So this is the typical appearance of a uracovesical calculus. That is the persistent uracal diverticulum, the dome of the bladder with the calculus in part of it in the bladder and part of it in the patent uracus. 
and uh, that is the cystoscopic picture the calculus portion in the lumen and portion within the wall which is seen on cystoscopy and after removal of the calculus you see the typical dumbbell shaped uh, the luminal calculus and the part of the calculus in the within the patent uracus. So this is uraco vesicle calculus another example of an adherent calculus. Now this is a child uh, you see the bladder and you see an echogenic lesion in the lumen with a dense shadowing typical of a calculus. But here the history is ureteric reimplantation done three months ago for a reflex. So ureteric urinary tract infection since then. So within three months you cannot expect such a big calculus forming in the urinary bladder. So you have to think uh, laterally and uh, this is actually a, a leftover pad in the urinary bladder due to surgery. It is a foreign body. Now here you see uh, echogenic lesion in the lumen of the bladder with shadowing. But another section shows that it is uh, appearance is like this. This is typical appearance of a prosthetic mesh. So the history, this is 66 year old man, hematuria 3 years, dysuria for 3 years and there is history of um, surgery for um, hernia 3 years back. So this is the appearance of the bladder. And when you look at the bladder, there is a, a bubble of air in the bladder. So this is um, a mesh plus a gas. So you must think of a fistula with a bubble. This history of uh, surgery for inguinal hernia makes a diagnosis of a migrated mesh. So how to confirm? You see the real time, you see the bladder, you see the part of the mesh which is extending outside the bladder wall into the bubble, typical appearance of the bowel. And uh, with that, we may uh, diagnose uh, migrated mesh with a vesicointestinal fistula. And um, you see the mesh uh, extending outside and you see that is extending within the small bowel and that is the bowel. So you can carefully look for the uh, fistula. You can see that there is gas movement between the bladder lumen and the small bowel loop confirming that it is um, a vesicointestinal fistula due to migrated mesh. That, that on cystoscopy, uh, that is the appearance of the mesh which was uh, removed and the patient became all right. Now, calculus can get impacted uh, at the neck of the bladder and cause acute retention. You see the over distended bladder and uh, you see the calculus impacted at the neck. The calculus can get impacted in the prostatic urethra. Now, this is at the neck. And distal to the neck, you see the that is the prostate. In the prostatic urethra, you see a calculus. This is abdominal scan, sagittal and the transverse. You see the bladder and the calculus in the prostatic urethra and which uh, you can also see on the perineal scan. Now just distal to the prostate you can get calculus impacted in the membranous urethra. This is the sagittal scan that is the prostate. Just distal to the prostate you see the calculus in transverse scan also. This you can confirm by perineal scan. This is the perineal scan, you see the urethra, this is the prostate. So at the junction, the membranous urethra, you see the calculus. And the calculus may be impacted in the penile urethra also, anterior urethra. This is the penile scan, you see the urethra in the corpus spongiosum. And uh, in the line of urethra, you see the calculus. So patients will have in intense dysuria. And uh, the calculus may be also impacted in the fossa navicularis. And that is the penile scan and you see the urethra and you see the glans penis and in the region of fossa navicularis you see the calculus with shadow. So ultrasound can pick up urethral calculus also. Thank you very much for your patient attention. Mm -hmm.